new tool means I got to get a new tool holder. So stick around and I'll show you how I made this real simple French cleat tool holder for my routers and my bits. Got a lot of blank spaces up here, so I need to start filling it up. I thought I'd build one that, that can uh, hold my new plunge router and enough room to put my trim router on it too. It'd be a very simple one. I got some scrap three quarter inch plywood here. It's kind of crappy wood. It's not square at all. So the first thing I got to do is square it up. Now to square this up, I'm just going to take off just a little bit. Then I'll flip it around and cut it to its final width. This thing is invaluable. A lot of times I'll use a, you'll see me use a feather board. For a wide piece, I like to use this. This really helps out. It's got an end piece here that'll spring down the end of your board to help you push it through. But most of the time you can push it through with just pressure on it, push down and over towards your fence. Now I should probably hook up my dust collection. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it around, use this edge and just Put it to its final dimension. Final width is going to be 10 inches. For the piece that's going to go up against the cleats, you need to go at least 11 inches or so. That way it gets supported by the cleat underneath it. My cleats are about three and a half inches apart, and there are three and three eighths. They were cut to three and a half inches, but I cut the edge off so they're three and three eighths. I know this is not square. I'll trim a little bit off, flip it around, and then cut it again to its final width. Yeah, I told you it was crappy wood. I don't know what the deal is there. Okay, 11 inches will fit nicely over two cleats and give me enough room to put the hanger up above on the top here. I have to cross cut it now. Normally I'd bring out my cross cut sled, but since it's less than 14 inches, I can use my miter saw. So I'm going to do the same thing over here at the miter saw. I'm going to trim a little bit off and then flip it around and cut it to the final dimensions. That way I can be sure that this thing is square. Then I'll bring in the second piece and cut it the same way. So now this thing should be square. Very nice. To determine how wide I want this piece, this piece is gonna go up against the French cleats. How wide I want it to be, I wanna bring some a side down this way. So I want it to be exactly plywood width longer than the piece. And then I'll bring it over here and mark it. Okay, now to build a support that comes down. Okay, I cross cut a couple pieces for supports from the back to the shelf itself. And of course, I'm not gonna leave it like that. I've, I've done it before where I just cut a 45. That's good, but I wanna give a little more room for the handles on that thing, grab the handles. So I wanna cut like a, a radius in here. So I gotta find something big enough to help me with that. Good old garbage can lid. This helped me out on my wedding arch as well. I used a jigsaw to cut that. I just put these in a couple days ago. Now I get to use them already. A lot of people ask me what I use these for. Well, this is a good example. Okay, I think the easiest way is gonna be attach these to the shelf first. 
and then attach it to the, the back. So I'll get some glue and brad nails. <laughs> Don't do that. I have a line back here I'm lining it up with. I'm going to line this edge up and just tack it in square. I know just left of this line is where my three quarter inch plywood is. I think I'll get a clamp to help that out. I have some bowing in one of these pieces. Everything looks square. Good. Now, once this glue dries, I was going to put some extra support down below here. I don't think I will. This thing is, once the glue dries, it's going to be solid. Okay, now I just got to put the cleat on the back. I got a piece of scrap that I cut down to size, 45. And this is a good size. This is uh, two and seven eighths. This is a three and a half inch gap. Two and seven eighths will tuck down nicely into here and still allow you room to lift it and get it out. So be careful with that when you're making your cleats for the back of your tools. Glue and brad nails. I'll show you a little trick on getting it level. So I'm just going to drive one brad in. Oh, it's sliding all over the place, of course, because it's got... Now I'll take it over the wall and level it up. Make sure it's seated in there. It would have helped if I would have brought the brad nailer with me. Make sure it's seated in there nice. Get it level. Drive one in. Now I can take it off and drive the rest of the brads in. Got some squeeze out down here. Can't really hang it up tonight. Get as much off as I can and then let it dry before I hang it up. Otherwise it'll glue itself right to that cleat. I think I'll put a hole. So I could take it over to my drill press, but I'm not looking for precision here. Just as I was getting ready to glue this on here on the edge, I decided wouldn't it be cool if I put the edge back here and then drilled holes in here for my router bits as far back as it'll go. Yeah, let me put it back here further. That'll leave me the option of putting something up here. So yeah, I'll go ahead and attach it right there. Make sure it's square first. Well, I just drove the nails through too long. They're inch and a quarter, so. Yeah, bad idea. I think what I'll do instead is just clamp this one. I visited a Rockler store while I was in the lower 48 recently. This is the only thing I bought was these storage inserts. I mean, I could drill a half inch hole or a quarter inch hole, but these are these will hold a quarter inch or a half inch. So I think I'll space these evenly. Drill some holes. 
requires a 5 8 inch bit, so I'll put my 5 8 Forstner bit in. Would have been a lot easier to drill these before I put it all together. Oh, kidding me. 